Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk, and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Michael McGrooch. He's a multidisciplinary artist. His current focus is creativity awareness educator, speaker, and author. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, Roman. Good to be here. Um, uh, where, where are you located? I'm in Southern California. Where are I'm you? on the East Coast. I'm in New Jersey. Oh, awesome. So, um, uh, who am I? Where am I? So, my name is Michael McGrooch. I um, was born in Vienna, uh, and I came here to America about when I was 18, 20. And um, first, I went back and forth, back and forth. And then I stayed here. Um, I was a sick child and I, and I have extreme dyslexia and dysgraphia and eye coordination. Um, I, I had a real hard time. I had to repeat the fourth, fifth and sixth grade or something, uh, because I just couldn't uh, regurgitate. I understood what they talked, but I couldn't regurgitate, which is a part of dyslexia. So, uh, I always knew I'm going to go to to America, not because of anything other than I knew it. It's not like I saw the films, I need to go, I need to be in Hollywood or anything. Uh, and while I was growing up, I wanted to, to do f something creative always because I couldn't be good in school. And about when I was so about 30, I looked back on my, you know, failed system relevance. And I looked back and I found, oh, uh, all my jobs, I wrote a resume, are all creative jobs. You know, for, I sold tapes out of my trunk. Uh, I was a DJ. I was a fashion show producer. I was advertising. I was, you know, video and TV production. So I deemed, and I think that was a pivotal, and I see that now through through making doing interviews, more and more it resonates with me. I think that was a pivotal point because I didn't let the system deem me as an artist. I saw it, you know, the experiential, you know, knowledge. I saw it on my, my resume. I couldn't fit in, even if I wanted to be, let's say an accountant or a businessman, I couldn't, you know, I, I was always a creative. So I said, I can't even choose to be something else because that's what I am. And I, and I think that decision that I said, I'm an artist, no matter what people say, that can, I, you know, whatever, if, if you feel that look for, look for evidence. And I saw with 30, 30 years old, I saw the evidence for me, why I call myself an artist. And that was major. And even though I struggled or whatever, but in the context of being an artist, knowing who I am, helped me a lot with my self-esteem. I wasn't questioning myself. You know, I said, okay, it's a different, if you don't like my art, this is, you know, it's a different taste. There's, art doesn't require that everybody likes it or that you have a lot of followers or, or be famous. And um, which is, by the way, in all systems like that, uh, because not everybody's Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos. Those are just showing you us the possibilities, right? The possibility was possible. And they're super system navigators. They are just like good chess, uh, chess player. I mean, nobody says, I want to be the best chess player, if you know. But in business, everybody thinks you need to be Elon Musk or, 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 or and that's only like in art. It's like one, two percent that are the icons, which the media reports about. And then on the other side, the media and other sister is uh, reporting about all the, the, the outset people, all the, the screwed up people. They never talk about, Oh, Roman was a great podcaster. He lived 110 years old and he always did his job. He was a good husband or whatever. They never say that. If you get crazy here and destroy something, then they show. So the media is molding us into kind of, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the superstars and the, the rat, nothing in the middle, you know, but most people are in the middle, you know, somewhere. So, so that's, and then, uh, you know, so I held on to that art stuff and that got me into, got me into, uh, you know, coming here, having a production company, um, 
uh, television production, first te um, television UHF for the FCC. I, I got licenses. And then I got, uh, I created a, a production company with an uh, Austrian investor. And then I was, um, I got into, you know, Robert Evans, who did The Godfather, you know, uh, somehow found me. And we can talk about this, you know, about, because I know you are about uh, giving something from your experience so that people don't have to do the same way. Um, and uh, so he talked to me and then I became uh, Arts Commissioner of Newport Beach, which was the same thing. It was the same. And I want to show you people that it is not something calculated. There's no calculation, any of this. My life is totally random and, and it's not, uh, because I couldn't fit in system. So I couldn't step on a ladder, right? I couldn't step the, the business ladder. And, uh, so everything came random. And even those quote unquote system successes, yeah, uh, happened randomly. And I, we can go into it if you want. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think the key thing, you know, like you said, you looked at your resume and you were self aware enough to identify mm -hmm. yourself as an artist. Um, to a certain extent, I guess, you know, there's different forms of art. I mean, I consider, you know, what we're doing now theoretically kind of art because not everybody Absolutely. can do it. Some people do it well. So, you know, spoken word, there's, you know, stories that are passed on in terms of kind yeah. of heritage, that kind of stuff. But I think it's really important to kind of be self-aware and, and, and even in today's kind of world, because there's titles, there's people that are in the corporate world, but, you know, who are you and where can you theoretically fit you don't fit anywhere but you can do all these things based on as yeah. soon as you identify who you are so being self-aware having enough kind of emotional empathy to say you know i'm a creative this is how i think you know i can do a range a plethora of jobs i don't fit into kind of the mold or one thing and i think that's important and you said about kind of like living your life and the opportunities that you've uh, you know come across as randomness and it's one of those things where think it's important because a lot of things you can calculate in life in life you can have a plan but 99 percent of the time that plan falls apart and then what do you do then so it's Wonderful. one of those things and also you know you don't know where an opportunity will take you or if that opportunity will align so like the stars align and that person comes into your life and says see who you are what you have to offer and then says hey i have this for you or i feel like you would be good at this and it mm -hmm. may not be something that you think you, you want to do or you have experience in, but, you know, seizing opportunities and taking advantage of the moment because you never know if that opportunity will come around again. Yeah. Yeah. But, but also if you, if you have, a, I have a lot of opportunities that I didn't, uh, they weren't right for me. So the just, you know, so in a system, you're more driven, uh, you know, you get a job offer, you better take it because there might not come another one up. But I, because of my my ways and my stuff, that my neurodiversity, I cannot uh, adapt very, really well, and and so I couldn't just take a job because I get a job. I had to take. So, for example, I was always in hospitality because I'm good with humans. So, hospitality jobs were good, you know, to to afford my artistry uh, and uh, and success. You know, I found out also. Uh, success is is a is a system definition of you know achieving a goal every quarter you have to achieve that core goal or surpass it or be below it and the system doesn't even want to say loss anymore they say negative growth uh, that it's so but as humans we can do everything in the good and the bad you know we can use a paring knife to make beautiful uh, uh, food you know, uh, decorations and because you are for the most gruesome things that we can imagine. And that's a little knife, you know, it's not even a big, big, it's nothing threatening. So what I'm saying, we, we have that and we have to be aware, like you say, self-awareness is king. You, you, you have to be aware that the power of humans is that they can do good as well as bad, but the same thing, atomic bomb, atomic energy, AI, right now, you know, they can do both. And the the thing is that when you understand that you are a part of nature, that we are just a, a, a species of nature, 
when have you heard that? I, I don't ha hear anybody saying that because humans have lost where they are. They're, they're teeter-tottering between systems that they created and nature, right? And then we need, we need um, uh, you know, we, we, we need uh, the science, a system to confirm that, for example, you know, the hot, cold therapy, keto, uh, fasting is good. That is a natural thing. Why do we need science to confirm that, to dis rediscover our humanity? We have all six senses. You know, when I come, I've, I didn't know you. I align, I adapt to you, and with, with all my six senses. So there is no, okay, when you go on romance, you have three steps, you have this, this to do. No, I'm not even thinking about that. I have a, a, and that's why I call the conversation that you and I have the second superpower. The first is creativity, because we can imagine, whatever we can imagine, we can manifest. And the second one is the exchange, because every exchange that you have, a human exchange, is actually finding, helping you find more of the puzzle piece that you are in humanity. If you exchange in a systemic way, like the news, I'm better, you are but worse, uh, and, and all the other stuff, it's going nowhere, as you see. Look at politics, look at that thing, it goes nowhere. It just It's just like, I'm right, you are wrong. I'm better than you, you are less than better. It's just, it's just, I have the experience, you don't know nothing. Just all false, false truth, you know, and that's yeah, why I, I see. Yeah, that's why I think uh, uh, humans have the total power, but we have forgotten it. Yeah, and you know, like you said, it's you know, you have a knowledge, you have a skill set or expertise. It's how you use it, how you decide, kind of to use it. And I think, like you said, kind of like every interaction I have. You know, I learned something about myself. Every conversation, I kind of like maybe from that person learn to think a little differently or that person may see something in me that I didn't see. Like, you know, you're really good at X, Y, Z. You're really good at, you know, expressing yourself this way. Why don't you explore this? So I think kind of the more conversations you have, the more interactions, you know, the more kind of robust you have and uh, of experiences. And like the longer you live life, the the experiences that I had, you know, 10, 15 years ago, the way you handle situations, adversity is different also based on all those experiences and things you've, uh, you know, you've dealt with as well. Yeah. And this comes a, a big lie, another system lie that I want your listeners to be aware. It should be sunny every day. How can it be sunny every day? You know, and if it's not sunny, then we sell you a Ferrari, a pill or a face job. Uh, uh, and then let's say we're buying those and then we, we say, hey, you know, we bought them. It was great a little bit, but now we are back to, 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 to zero. And they say, oh, we sell you something else, or for a Lamborghini and whatever. And then, it, and we buy them, also not good. Then guess what the system says? There's inherently something wrong with you guys because our system works on, we deliver that it is every day sunny. And it can't happen because humans are constantly growing and changing. There's no, no moment is the same. Even if you do moments with your girlfriends or with whatever, every everything is always different. We're always expanding. And when we expand, you, you bump into stuff. So if you expand more than I, you're gonna bump into me. And that and that could be that you just, you know, I feel I feel a twitch, you know, like you said something or whatever, or it could be a, a full blown uh, exchange, you know? And if I would say, I need time to readjust, realign, you know? And in that time, uh, like trauma and all the other stuff is you need time to realign to your higher, or you can use that and, and put yourself totally down. But what I'm saying is it can be sunny every day because we go into this adversity and, and you know, there's a whole school of, you know, do adversity with a cold shower and, and all that stuff uh, physically, also mentally, you know, if you feel angry, feel angry, don't hit the person, don't expose it on anything, but have your whatever, oh, this feels really bad. The guy cheated me out of a million dollars. Feel the feeling, but stay with the adversity. So you can release that energy and not harbor it or put it into your stomach and get cancer or something. 
So, so the system tells you actually exactly the opposite of how human function. Humans don't function like that. Yeah, I agree. And it's like you said, media and everything around you is is telling you or showing you like something that is like, you know, be, I'm motivated 100% of the time. That's impossible. You know, you wake up, you're dealing yeah. with stuff as mm -hmm. people and, and, and any, anything in life, you're going to have to go through some adversity. If you get to a certain part in, of your life, you start losing loved ones, you start dealing with grief, yeah. you know, the the ramifications of that and coping in your own way. So it, it's it's one of those things, like you said, it's it's very imperfect and you can't, I mean, I'm from Eastern Europe, so it's one of those things where like Eastern Europeans are known for being very stoic. So it's like yeah. in the US, people think, are you, are you happy at this event? Are you, you know, content? And it's, you know, just because I'm not smiling, one doesn't mean I'm not happy, but also everyone I think is dealing with things and dealing and handling life in their own ways as well. Mm hmm yeah, I, I I totally agree with you. It's it's just it's just but but I think when once we know it because till fifty I hit the wall. I constantly did what the system said: push through it, be hard. You know, take it, take it, go in. And I have a very strong spirit because I always had adversity, which exactly was because I had adversity because I was a chick ch sick child and blah blah blah. But it's a luck because a lot of people that in my situations died, not because they were better people or worse people. They just weren't blessed with a spirit like it. It's like the, the weak animal dies in the nature, you know, and it's not like an arrogance, but it's just, you know, you're blessed having that spirit that you have. You could have stayed in East Europe. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's, 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 we are blessed with that. And the self-awareness that you are blessed with that spirit. Uh, and you just try to be the best that you can, not to give the most to people or, or sacrifice yourself for everybody. No, you be the best, you show up as the best as you can, you know? And I think by that, everything is handled. If everybody does the best that he or she can, not being the best in this field, the best that you can do and not pretending you are something else because the system promotes pretending show yourself with your muscles and with your Ferrari in the back and do this, you know, look at Instagram. I mean, it's all moments in time that, you know, it's, I feel like the, the, the shot is taken and the people just falling apart. You know, it's a highlight the selfie is taken and the people fall apart, you know? Yep. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a highlight reel and majority of people that put things on online, they're not going to put, things that they struggle with, you know, them in vulnerable situations, they're going to highlight, you know, I'm strong, I'm successful, yeah. um, you know, meeting the definition of what society means or defines as success. And I mean, I think if more people actually shared what they were going through and like being honest with themselves yeah. and more vulnerable in a public setting, it would do a lot better for society as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not making a. Uh, I'm not making a thing and said, you know, I had it always easy, but I wanted to say that these highlights, you know, that I could have filmed, which I didn't, but the highlights that I that I had to work with Robert Evans happened just by chance. I was go I was in France. I was walking on the. I was in TV business, and somebody came to me and says, you know, when you come back, you know, Mr. Evans would like to talk to you. I said what? I didn't know who Evans was. And and then I asked my friends there in the television field, oh, what then it can't. And then I thought, oh my God, this is bullshit. You know, there's somebody bullshitting me, you know, pulling my, my leg. Came back uh, and by chance, you know, at, my, at this car, that wasn't the first thing I did because I didn't care about that. I had to follow up on the, on the television sales. And then, and then I, I, I called him and then I, it, we became really good friends. It's, it was not about the, the, the product co-production we produced together, but it was more, we became good friends and, and, and the same with the arts commission. I did, I was very involved in this sculpture garden and I was not understanding why somebody would do a sculpture garden that is static. I said, you got to do a sculpture garden where you rotate the art. And so I was very much involved in, in that thing. And somebody said, do came to me and said, do you want to be arts commissioner? And I said, yeah, I can fill that out, fill it out. Five years later, I get a call. Did you know 
six of seven councilmen voted for you as an auditor. So I'm just saying, this is, this, there's no, I didn't in any way, I'm not responsible. You know, everybody say, oh, it's, everybody says I'm responsible that this happens. I'm not responsible. I'm just showing up. I'm just showing up the best that I can be. And this is what happens, you know? And, it, yeah. and a lot of shit happened too, you know? Yeah, I mean, things kind of go, you do your best, but things around you, like you're not in control of everything. So exactly. like you're working on a team, you have employees, whatever your you know endeavor is, something is always going to go wrong at some point. And you, de you, know, you decide how to adjust or pivot or go down that path and hit a you know, brick wall, but that's, that's on you or quit. So you yeah. know, life isn't just a straight road where everything, like you said, is, is sunshine and you know, everybody's happy. Oftentimes, a lot of personalities yeah. get together. You have to figure out how to work together, how to like mm -hmm. add the most value. But like you said, if you're, if you're trying your best yourself as a person, not necessarily trying your best to, you know, hammer a nail, but trying your best just to give your all, like eventually people notice around you and kind of see and, and feel that because I've had situations, the, how I got into digital marketing was, um, the last economy, the last recession in 2008, I graduated uh, college. I couldn't find a job. I interned mm -hmm. with the Secret Service, and I was just passionate to do something. And the thing that really kept me sane was going to the gym. And so I started talking to someone, and they saw that, like, you know, I communicated well, and, you know, I was passionate mm -hmm. just to do something that they basically said, okay, you seem like a hard worker. You can articulate yourself. Why don't you, you know, learn this and you can start doing it for my business. And then, you know, I just did it. So yeah. it's one of those things where, you know, you just show up, like you said, and, you know, opportunities could potentially just, you know, form around you. Yeah. Because you attract, because if you're not happy with yourself uh, and, 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 and how you got to be happy. And, and I have a theory on that too, how to be happy is, uh, see what is success in the human realm. Success in the human realm is fulfillment. And fulfillment is that feeling that you have after an orgasm. Not the orgasm, after an orgasm. The world is fine. I'm fine. Everything is fine. Because it's basically almost the, the feedback, emotional feedback loop after the union that, you know, it's almost like a secret. The, you know, nature tells you a little secret. After the union, everything is good. You know, you're good. And so right after, not after all, and then you compartmentalize, was it a good thing to do or whatever? I'm just saying right after. And that feeling everybody sells you with the Ferrari, with the pill, with the face job. It's, it's just little income. And it's, that's where systems, because on the other side of systems are always you, also humans. They know what to do. They said, I mean, not consciously often, but they say, how can I get that people to feel better? And that's the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is, I give you an Oscar. I give you a Grammy. I give you the Olympic medal. But what that does to, to humans is they, a lot, not all, but a lot of people are just focusing on that goal. And when that goal happens, it all destroys. That's why you have suicides. That's why you have people that have billion dollars, they, they, they kill themselves, you know? Um, you know, Bourdain and stuff, they have, the life that they always dreamed of having, but they didn't have the fulfillment in it. So while you're on your journey and you milk the fulfillment, like I'm right now, I'm, I'm focusing on fulfillment, talking with you. I'm in the moment and I'm, I'm present. I'm not thinking about, oh my God, I have to go get groceries or pay the bills or anything. I'm in the moment and I, I'm looking for, I'm gauging myself that where's that fulfillment? And it's always with humans, very easy to be fulfilled. So we don't have to do a lot. You just have a, a good conversation and the fulfillment just comes. And I think that's why everybody does podcasts, even though it's not a, a big money maker, you know? Yeah. And like you said, there's a lot of successful people have, you know, wealth and prestige, but like, you know, they're, they're coping and suffering with things and uh, they're not fulfilled. And, you know, unfortunately coupled with things like, mental health issues that aren't addressed and you know like you said anthony bourdain robin yeah. williams and it seems yeah. you know every year there's there's somebody like that that you would think from the outside looking um in that you know their life is quote unquote 
perfect. They have, you know, achieved a level of success. They have people around them. And, you know, unfortunately, like if you're not fulfilled, you feel, uh, I mean, in my opinion alone, I think everybody goes through that and they have to figure yeah. out what kind of fills that cup for them in life. And another person cannot do it. A Ferrari cannot do it. Nothing can. You have to gauge what makes you feel fulfilled, not just saying, oh, if I get that girl, I'm fulfilled. You know, every time I'm with this girl, I'm fulfilled. Yeah, recognize that, but it's not her. She's just putting you, her energy puts you in that space. But, you know, uh, obviously, you know, there's something special there, you know, uh, but but I'm not saying put it all away on her. Don't put it on the way on the Ferrari. It makes you feel good, you know, driving around. Just, put, you know, feel it, what generates that in you. And also, if you, if the Ferrari does it, ask yourself why. Because I think there is something to find in now. You might be... Uh, you might be liking aesthetics, you know? So if you like a Ferrari, you might like art, you know? Uh, if, you know, it's just, it's just, why do you like that? It's always the questions. A lot of people uh, do things because society says success, you know? And what you said, you know, Robin Williams is, yeah, both of those guys, Anthony and Robin, uh, are, are system successful. They're completely, but they're not fulfilled. They're not humanly fulfilled. Elon Musk is system successful. I don't think he's fulfilled. And everybody can sense that. I think he's the master chess player in the monopoly game that we all play that's called economy, that is based on financial principles, and he's a master chess player. But I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't know it, but it doesn't feel for me as a fulfilled person. You know, that so, so, and a lot of people, uh, Trump, everybody, all these things, they're not seem fulfilled. And if they are fulfilled, you're not hearing from them. See, if they were fulfilled, like I said before in the media, you wouldn't even hear from them. You don't hear from a politician that does his job and then goes home and retires or an abdicates when he's done. You, you never hear from a housewife that, that brings up five kids and, and is a great thing and did great thing for their community. Uh, she gets a award here and then, but she she never you never hear from her in the media, you know. You so know, do you, you think? Hear, go ahead. Yeah. So do you think like you mentioned, kind of like you like Elon Musk, and you're like at the top of you know, you know, top whatever wealthiest you know people in the world, uh, business mind, that kind of stuff. The the more theoretically successful you are in your business, in your craft, the harder it is to kind of fill that cup like that find that next thing like if you keep reaching goals goals and arguably he's reached you know the business goals wise built companies that are some of the yeah. top companies in history yeah it I, I would think you know thinking about it having this conversation it's it's harder to stay you know fulfilled i th I mean for me i guess obviously i haven't reached that level of, of success or built something on that level but oftentimes i have to take a step back and think about what I did achieve, how I got here, and have gratitude for that and stay grounded in that way. I think it, it keeps me back to a level head. But do you think that's, that's the case? The more kind of systemic goals and, uh, you know, achievements you achieve, the harder it is to, you know, They, they, they don't mean anything. Uh, yeah. uh, Roman, it, 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 hum, humanly systemic goals do you think nature cares if a giraffe is different than a zebra? The zebra thinks, oh, the giraffe is different. An ant is different than an elephant. There is no classification. There's no stereotyping. There's no racism. There's no genderism. There's, there, there's all, all these things that a system generated. And when the people then freak out and have mind problems and all the other stuff, then it amplifies it even more. And when you give them tools like an AK-47 or you give them a... Uh, AI, or you give them a computer to do things. They disturbed people. Will act. Look at uh, you know the war, uh, uh, Putin and Zelensky. The, this these two have were part integral part that two hundred thousand people died, soldiers died, and civilians. How can you digest that humanly? Systemically, they make themselves right. Oh, he, he crossed the borders. He did this. He did that. But it's only systemically. Humans, th tell me one human that wanted a war unless uh, it was a leader. 
or a group of leaders th that use the system to, to manipulate. Humans don't want war. No human ever, ever, ever. I know a lot of people because I'm old, <laughs> a lot of people that had the Second World War and stuff. Nobody ever in this history of humanity wanted war from a people. Not, not, I'm not talking a soldier. I'm not talking about uh, the leaders. So war is the is basically be, you know why also people are so against wars because it's capitulation it's capitulation that humans are worthless and it's a, a system definition of that because humans have like nature everything to be in harmony and balance and constantly harmony and we balance we use our adaptability which is the third superpower to to make system function because if we don't adapt to systems. No system can is, is relevant. If there's no humans, systems are irrelevant. If there's no system, it's harder. I'm not against systems. I'm saying if you if you if there's no systems, humans still can survive because they're limitless. They help each other out, and that's what 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 systems don't have. And I think that this separation. I wanted to make that so separation. Like uh, I told you, I talked a, a year ago about uh, we are already living in a metaverse and that metaverse is systems it's a habitat you get born in a hospital you get baptized other system you get a school another system you get a job in other system you get married in another system so all your habit we have lost our the humane as if we don't know where we belong so we are teeter-tottering we're not really saying we are a species of nature because we created new york and singapore and Nike and Apple and all these things, but we also don't say we are system because no system ever gives birth to a human or, or the thing. I mean, you know, we can finagle something, but it, it screwed up. You know, when you clone people, clone things, it's, it screws it up because we are not as smart. We can't even uh, replicate how a tree gets a hundred yards up, uh, water up up into the leaves and we can't replicate because we can't understand it but it's funny when i talk about it and everybody i talk to there's no oh we can never figure that out no they know this works this is nature because we are nature the tree is nature we can relate to yeah we understand we don't need to know how and we don't need to copy it but nothing has value since all systems are uh, based on financial principle no, but nothing has value unless it is human invented or created. So the systems a lot of times copy nature, copy, you know, humans, you know, we give you dating apps. In, in the world, you never need a dating app, but it's a $2 billion business. And the sad thing is the condition, the system conditioning in that is now we you know, the people find out all of a sudden that the things that, that you're only who heard of the good datings, you know, that just happened, you know, where people got together, got married, got kids and everything. Because we have like 15 years, we have uh, over over 15 years, we have dating apps. But we find that out. And the so the people say, what are you going to do without dating apps? We are incapable of knowing how to engage somebody without a dating app. So the systems that we created have conditioned us that we are powerless. And this is just a microcosm. This is in everything. And I'm the biggest proponent of human limitlessness and say, we got to look at this. I don't say get rid of systems. I don't say get rid of humans. I'm saying just be aware why you have certain problems and why, and you don't have to have these problems. And if you look for a solution, just see how they do it in, in nature. There's no lion in nature that kills all the gazelles that he is tomorrow has another gazelle to eat. He eats one gazelle and an hour later, the gazelle is like three feet, 10 feet of him and and and, and, and grazes because she knows or he knows that, that, <laughs> that, that, that the lion is full. It's just, we have six senses, we don't use them. And the AI is the, you see, this is the, this is the craziness. This is so insane. So we created all these systems that created a lot of work, as you know, fill out the forms, do the permission, everything to standard, do of everything. So we have all of a sudden we accumulated all this work that we hate. 
that is just horrible. We can't get to the creativity. We can't get to our talk. We have to create a podcast system and this and this and this. And to, to post it, you have to do all this work. Now we have AI. AI is going to be the, the big thing. But but what is it what is it doing? It just makes us more system adept. And I'm not saying, oh, it shouldn't help us. It's great. You know, I use it because of typing, because my typing is so bad and stuff. But it's bringing us, makes us more and more dependent on systems. And we don't know. And and, and in this case now, in, in, in this specific case of AI is that it, it has the possibility to be an invention, like we create atomic reactors, right? And we are not knowing about a, atomic energy and stuff. And all of a sudden we create something and it blows up. That's it. It's not even the human use it as a bad thing. It just, you know, that's why they say they need a black box for AI because, because we cannot rep, when if it's self-learning, we need to replicate where it made a mistake and you know, you know, everybody that has a cell phone knows to electronics glitch. There's, there's something, there's a bigger power with, or, or, or energy when it, when it starts glitching. So how are you going to fix the glitch? And, and, and that's a, the, the self-learning if, if, you know, that's, that's, that's the problem. If I don't believe it's the people only the disturbed, the, the disturbed people, like the, the, the shoot, kids shoot, shoot out in, 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 in classes. This just disturbed, the system disturbed kid gets in and kills everybody and, you know, in, in school. It's just, and it's just, it just, it's, it's not, humans don't do things like that. When, when you, when tribes fight, indigenous tribes, they one, but they, they fight perhaps very shortly, like in nature, you know, when two animals fight, and then the other one moves away. They're not going to stay and keep fighting in nature. But then when it became systems, like a kingdom or something, then it's forever. Because then the ego is ego driven. Yeah, that makes uh, a lot of sense. Or just kind of thinking about kind of going back to, you know, you're born and taking yourself out of a situation. Uh, if you're brought up, I don't know, in the wilderness, you still have yeah. theoretically the same a skill set, problem solving skills yeah. that you can, you know, get into a city or something. Eventually you can adapt because you, yeah. you have those, you know, inherent things in terms of problem solving. Although it might be weird that you're in this place that is like so yeah. out of your norm, that you, going back, you have all those abilities. And like you said, I think it's, you know, the lion example, they only you know, eat what they eat. And then until the next time they're hungry, yeah. but we, you know, overfish, over hunt over everything. And then, yeah. you know, kind of wonder why this species is extinct or, you know, why we don't have these specific resources anymore. So, yeah, I mean, that's really interesting. And I have zero education, by the way, I, I told you, I, I, I couldn't, I, I could, I couldn't fit into any, any system. So, and I, I can so everything is self-taught. I'm not saying that's bad. I think that's actually good because look at the perspective I give you. I give you a total different perspective. And, and, and that's what, you know, my shtick is now because I could never fit. I could never be in this. And even with that, I got into working with, with good people or being a, a politician and all this stuff. Even we think, see, that would be very hard, hardly possible in Europe because Europe is so systemic. And I think probably unconsciously I moved here. That was my driver, not, oh, America is the greatest. It's like, I think the, if I want to survive, I got to go to the other Savannah. You know, I, I, I can't, I can't be here where there's no food. I need to go where, where I can actually fit in as a human, not as in the system. I can fit in as a human. And I always say the attractiveness of America is not its politics or whatever it is. It's, it's people. Because the, the, the ideal of having everybody like you and me and everybody in the same place is the ideal. It's that you can't beat that ideal. You, that's why China, China is not beating America because it's it just, because we are inclusive. We are, you know, we're DNA driven to, to fit. We have different eyes, different fingerprints, different DNA, every 8 billion of us. And we're driven in that 
And I, I think there's another hint from nature. I said, you know, look at that. Why don't you look at that? You know, that we all need to need each other. Not we need to not hug, we not not hang out with each other, but we need each other as in a whole. You know. Yeah, I agree. So, what's one piece of advice you could leave with the audience, personal or professional? First of all, I, I say there's two things. One is compartmentalized systems versus human relevant. What is system relevant? What is human? How much affects your human relevance? The system affects your human relevance. And always human relevance has to be primarily, has to be the, the priority. And the other thing is awareness trumps all. Because once you are aware, like from this podcast, you cannot make yourself unaware. The things that I tell you is not three steps. So people get upset when I say, oh, what, what are your steps? What would you say with the three steps are? There's no three steps. I say compartmentalizing and, and I know that, that awareness is everything. With knowledge, you forget. And knowledge is always outdated, you know? Yeah, I agree. So I really appreciate you stopping by today. Can you let the audience know how they can find you or anything else you have going on? Yeah, uh, michaelm.com. I'm here for you, Roman, and having a good conversation. And because I believe that is the second superpower. If people want to contact me or talk to me or hire me or whatever, that's up to them. michaelm.com, Michael with two L's, michaelm.com. And uh, we can do this anytime, Roman, if you want to do it specifically about topics. And uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, and it's really fun when you have some somebody that is actually reflecting what you're saying. That's a good thing because I'm always out on the forefront. And, and you know, I, I had to have to hit a lot of things where I said, oh, it doesn't make sense. And then when you find a human that actually is in touch with his feelings, it, it, it is very uh, pleasing. I agree. Thanks again for stopping by. Thank you, Roman.